my name is Francois Sergi. I can't actually remember whether Chisholm Hale came first or Dartington Festival came first. I studied contemporary dance at the London School of Contemporary Dance and I come from Switzerland so I'd done ballet before and then I came to study at the at the place as we call it called it and but I don't have um an obvious dancer's body and I I've, I've always been thrown out of you know what I I defined as, as I defined then as the establishment uh so after my training there was a period of yeah fairly low period of depression and stuff but then I don't actually know who introduced me to new dance this is the problem because I've left it now for 20 years so I can't actually remember whether it was people like because I know I met Emmeline Clade through um, a woman's a woman's group in Brixton but I don't know or whether it was because I was in the dance world and then people started saying I remember uh, actually Jackie Lansley and others coming to the London Contemporary Dance School to do a workshop and Fergus Early to do a workshop and a discussion about their work and I remember being a little bit nonplussed at the time thinking okay they want to challenge everything but what is it they are actually doing at that time i didn't see the actual difference the, the actual i remember asking them a question but what is it you actually doing <laughs> you want to challenge it so what, what, and i remember jackie looking at me thinking bloody hell you know she can't she see anyway uh, but then i so i can't remember what happened i know i went to see a performance by um Kirsty Simpson at X6 anyway but the main thing i remember is going to Dartington Fe dance festival in 81 and being transformed mm. i remember coming back because i was already living here but we were living communally in this house and uh, i opened the door and no nobody else was involved in dance okay in my house and I remember feeling looking at everybody was like all tense and all crunched up and 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 me feeling three inches taller, you know that the release thing of the release technique, and feeling wonderfully light and feeling completely liberated, and that got me onto a path where I learned contact improvisation and then I, I gradually I got involved with martial art as well. Uh, Aikido and but I can't remember the first time I went to Chisholm Hill and I know I did some workshops with Mary Prestige, Kirsty Simpson who I loved seeing perform and and Mehdi Dupré was I loved looking at her perf performance performances in Dartington the, because I went in 81, 83 and 86 I remember really being so impressed with the performances there and Mehdi's work and also somebody I think was called Julian Hamilton yeah. uh, and, being, and his performance was extraordinary to me. It revealed a language, a dance language which I could understand, which was his own, but that took me into a path of developing my own dance language. And so I remember Chisholm Hale as a student being a wonderful place to, to study in terms of the physicality of the um, floor, you know, which is a floor, I believe, they took from X6 and, um, and the wall, that wall which was white scrubbed so you saw the bricks, it was absolutely wonderful to do contact against it and, and, and the physicality and the the, the the sensorial quality of the space was wonderful so in terms of learning new dance um it was a wonderful place to 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 yeah to learn it mm. and i got involved 
um, in, in, with a, um, a big artist collective in Brixton called the Brixton Art Gallery, which is no longer there, but we were a big alternative um, artist collective. And we run exhibition workshops and I organise some performances there. Mm. So that became my main my main involvement. I also have performed a lot at a local theatre called Oval House, which is also, again, no longer there. So Cheers and Hail was very important, but not... It was more important to me as a dance artist than I was important to it, in the sense that I did not participate that much in the running of things. Um, except there was a period, but that's later on, in the mid-90s, where I lived briefly in Tower Hamlet. Mm. And then one of the directors was Henrietta Aziri, and uh, I then collaborated with her. Mm. Um, but I was then more involved, which is in her that period, but unfortunately I had to leave there so that kind of ended. Um, there were other people who taught me, um, Anna First, for example, but she, but I remember her workshop being really important to me, but they weren't in Etches and Hale, they were in North London somewhere. Mm. And obviously Steve Paxton, but again, I don't, I, I didn't do workshop with him at Etches and Hale. Yeah. But Etches and Hale was, 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 yeah, it was very important to me as a performer in terms of I realised looking at my archive that I did all my very early performances there. But Chisholm Hill was there for me in 80, 82, 83, 85 and then later on as well. So obviously it was a, a safe place and also a source of inspiration but but I would go there to perform or do the do some workshops, but I wouldn't be there to rehearse yeah. or or to network. And what's interesting is that two performances of mine, Etches and Hale, Barefoot Pacemaker in eighty seven and Crumble Crumbled in ninety four, were collaborations between Chis and Hale and Camera Work. So in eighty seven, it was. I was collaborating with a photographer called Rosie Martin and we were asked to be part of an exhibition at Camera Work. So the, the photographs, which are part of my, because I always perform with, I always perform with um, installation, photographic, inst slide projection and install, um, photo photography basically is always central to my work. And so the photographs were at Camera Work as part of a large show and the performance was at Chisholm Hale and in 94, this was actually a commission in 94, um, I did, I devised the performance which I performed at Chisholm Hale but at Camera Work I did a residency with a group of participants, self, you know, advertised, so it's like a workshop, but it was a residency whereby we devised the performance. And the evening was, people would come to see me at Chisholm Hale. They would come to see me at Chisholm Hale. Then they would walk down the street to Camera Work and see the the work that we'd done at Camera Work. And as as a whole project, it was actually wonderful. So again, it was like a, a real good collaborative yeah. network. Yeah, it's interesting that um, crossing over of disciplines with dance and um, photography and to also hear you talking about how you always performed in that sort of installation um, setting or how photography was always really important to you. Because that piece that you uh, mentioned, Barefoot Pacemaker with Rosie Martin, um, I understand you were using a, a technique called phototherapy, which was developed by Rosie Martin and Joe Spence. Yeah. Um, and and that kind of explored the intersection between art and health and, and, and well-being um, and seems to have an overlap with 
what what seems to be a sort of um influence from the women's liberation in your work you talked um when you first introduced yourself you talked about not having a body for dance and and already it's, you're you're thinking about body and and dance and the sort of the male gaze i suppose on on the dancer's body um what was it about dance that allowed you to explore some of these ideas you know to do with well-being and health and and art and also feminism was that important to you at the time um, oh yeah totally I mean I'm, I'm really glad that you're going in, in in that direction because I've always been a political person mm. okay and first I was focusing on quote socialism even communism but then I realized I had to focus I mean this was in the late 70s, early 80s, I had to focus on something that affected me personally. So, and also there was a very strong wave of feminism at that point. So I got really involved with the, the women's movement. And it was very clear to me that my, I was always going to be a political artist. But also, dance was my life. I always wanted to be a dancer from the age of five, okay. And so I was obviously going to express my my politics in my uh, through dance, and in a sense, new dance allows to create a, a movement to create a language from within your own body, as opposed to look at it from without yeah and to discover your whole your own physicality and also work with your real person and so in a sense it gave new dance and release technique contact polarization the physicality and the sense of working with the body for a lot of people that remains almost an abstract concept of working with the physicality of the body as bones and movement, looking at movement for its own sake. But for me, that allows, new dance allows the person to permeate. And the person is a political being, is influenced, is made by society. So the person for me was this woman. So all that could express itself and become a language which for me was a feminist language but there's also the notion of the male gaze the vulnerability of the performer and challenging the notion of watching performing the relationship between the audience and the performer then there is another question which is actually looking at feminist issues such mm. as male violence or the oppression of the body to fit within the beauty ideals. And so in one piece called Grounds to Act, which I didn't actually perform at Chisholm Hill, um, at one point I perform in the dark just with torches, but it's a way of saying I'm not going to show you my body but you're just going to, to have to enter my world, you know. Mm. There was a lot of research to do with creating a, f a feminist language. And I didn't mind, I guess, being categorised as a feminist, you know. I didn't mind because that you do end up being put in a, in a certain slot. So my work was always about feminist themes, but it was also trying to develop a feminist language. How were these sort of feminist works, these works that you were creating, how were they being received? You know, it's actually very difficult to really know in the sense that mm. people who come to see you after performance are the ones who have liked it, mm. as opposed to the ones who think, God, you know. To a certain level, dance is a difficult language, a difficult medium. I think people are so much used to music for a start there's so much more knowledge about the different style and they can enter music much much more easily and also to a certain degree the visual arts because there's more training in looking at images 
But when you're talking about individual contemporary dance languages, it's harder for people to have a way of entering. Mm. That. And and they go, well, what is she saying? Mm. So I, I'm aware that dance as an art form is difficult. In the 70s, 80s, there was a real sense that we were cr- dance was exploding as 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 an art form. It was creating this really complex in all sorts of directions. Complex languages, complex visual aesthetics, complex physical aesthetics. Say, and I and then it it kind of calmed down a bit. You know, the, the the fact that the performer's doing just walking for hours on end. I mean, that's, you know, d- very demanding mm. on an audience. But it's very, very necessary work. There's two questions which are related here for me that are coming up. And one of them is, um, and you have touched on this, so maybe maybe you won't have anything else to add, really, but what drew you to Chisenhell and... Other question that's related to that is were there other spaces you mentioned the Brixton Art Gallery and Oval House Theatre, but were there other spaces as a dancer um often it seems working in collaboration, you know, either with other disciplines, with photography or with other people through in other disciplines, were there other spaces that allowed you to do what you wanted to do with your practice? Well, this is where I'm, I'm, it's kind of quite vague as to what drew me to Chisholm. Mm. It must have been people who knew about it mm. or who were involved and said, you must come and do a workshop and, you know, study. And so it's like an osmosis thing. Once you enter a kind of loose group within London of people learning and practising new dance, you then you then know of Chisenhall. But I remember other places doing workshops at other places, but they were purely kind of hired halls, okay? Whilst Chisenhall was the soul, in a sense, of new dance for me, in the sense that that's where you could not only learn or teach, but perform as well and meet up and be free to do, I mean, that physical space, that gorgeous space, even though it was already quite, not decrepit, but, you know, it showed its rusty ends, the windows and things, It, but it had this warmth and this light that was absolutely right. It's like the Dartington Dance Department had gorgeous spaces, but they were on a grand scale. What Chisholm Hale was on a our scale, us artists who've got no money kind of scale. But it felt really, really beautiful space to work on. And that in itself, I mean, the fact that they decided to take that floor and put it there was a, a, strike, a stroke of genius. Mm. And so that made it so much nicer to be there. And it felt attuned to what the movement we were doing. So in that sense, it was like the soul of of new dance, even though there were lots of other places and and I guess you don't necessarily know what you've got until it's gone and it's gone. So in a sense, I I used it more than but more as a performer, and the performances were really nice to do there, but. It was more like a venue. But in a sense, it didn't have the clout that Dartington had because I guess the the, the funding wasn't there to really make it explode. And in a sense, even if it, if it had got more funding, it might have actually, you know, the pressure of actually being a more successful space might have changed its mm. outlook. So, I don't know. 
but it was also depending on who was running it, who was involved. And obviously over the years, the people who founded it moved on. And so that spirit, and their spirit, the spirit of X6, was obviously very strong to start with. And then they moved on, either left London or moved on to do their own stuff. And and so in, in, inevitably it kind of became less of a of pioneering thing, more of a consolidating and that's when I was involved, but but the spirit the spirit remained. I don't know whether at the time you were as artists, you were sort of talking about the new dance movement or that's something that sort of developed looking back at it historically. I don't know whether there was an awareness of this new new movement or whether it was just exploring in lots of different ways. Oh, no, there was a very clear sense that we were part of a new movement. Mm. I mean, it had come, it had come from the States. You know, I mean, Steve Paxton, Mary Ferguson... Jones, Skinner, mm. they're all from the States. So we were importing it and they were coming they were here as well. But we very much felt we were challenging the first wave of contemporary dance, if you like. Mm. The I mean I'd learned, you know, the Graham Graham technique and 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 even and going beyond Cunningham and so we were really like most Cunningham we we were really like a new wave mm. and taking it maybe in Britain in some of us in a more political form yeah responding to specifically the British climate was part of the new dance movement um, and of course there was new dance magazine and writing played an important role in that but I also um, noted your your article in Spare Rib magazine in 1983 and again you know writing plays this really important role in talking about development of of the dance ideas but also feminism and and the personal as well drawing on your personal experiences and the magazine itself is quite broad. It, it it talks a lot about companies which I'm not I might not have been interested, in, but but it also talks about the new dance movement and where it was going. And it was it must have been incredibly influential to me. Mm. More than you you've realised because yeah, I'm looking at each issue thinking, Oh, I remember looking at that and mm. oh yeah. And, oh, that person, yeah, I'd forgotten. And, yeah, and it was actually quite a big movement in terms of numbers, you know. So, in that sense, at the time we might not have realised that, but the decision of the X6 Collective to form New Dance, the magazine, was actually really important. Yeah. An alternative voice. Mm. I mean, uh, later on, Dance Theatre Journal replaced when New Dance magazine stopped. Obviously, I then now, you know, in my list of old magazine, there's New Dance and then there is Dance City Journal. So I can see that it took over, but it wasn't the same. No. No. There was one thing I wanted to mention that is really I- iconic to Chisholm Hair, which is the, the Far Escape. Am I right in thinking that to start with, it was just like an incredibly kind of spirally bit and then they had it, they managed to get funding to have it along the, um, the side of the building. Yeah. In 94, one, one performance that I did there, which stood out because it was crumbled, because I decided, because I was opening it there, so I knew I was going to do it at Chisholm Hill first, so I decided to leave via the far exit so at the end music is still playing and I push open those doors it's like I mean it's like it was saying I am flying now I am free and then I run back down and then I came back up but I came back via the the back of the audience but that moment of opening the, the hard you know far exit doors and then the air coming in I'm sure it 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 would have been really nice as an image to the yeah. audience. So it was actually using that far exit 
in a, in a good way. Yeah, because the issue of access has always been a huge issue. I mean, you're saying now it is a very big issue because there's no lift. But at the time, it already was. You talking about the space earlier, the sort of really tangible, tactile relationship to the floor and the walls, and then that image that you described of throwing open the doors and using the whole building as you wanted to. Through our conversation, you kind of answered um, one of my other questions, which is how would you describe Chisenhow? Yeah, I mean, I have. It's that, when I said it's the soul, it's a new dance. It was a safe place to produce work. You know, when I mentioned earlier that dance is a difficult language, it's a difficult art form, well, you knew that at Chisenhale, people would people who, who would be coming to see your work would be skilled at seeing your work. Yeah, one of the performances I did, a collaboration with Henry Jaziri, um, she really pushed me to develop my, my language even further into into unique but difficult physical words, if you like. And I know most people thought, what is she on about? But at Chisenhale, they, they screamed at the end. I mean, it's partly the students. But so you knew your work was going to be more understood. Mm. There were very many different elements. You need a body of people yeah. who are sharing an outlook and, and a vision. And obviously yeah. the XX Collective had that. And it infused us to make it bigger and, and bigger. And that's obviously vital. The the space, the the building itself on its own wouldn't would not do it. But the fact that they put that floor there means that their love was in it as well, through that floor. So so yeah, it's maybe why it survived so long, because the building itself it is saying, Come here. You know, if the building was more indifferent, mm. the the activities, the group, the collective or the organisation may well have moved on somewhere else. So despite the, the technical difficulties of the building with lack of, step, of, of lift and, and the old, the element, the fact that it's old as well is important. Yeah. The fact that it's an old warehouse in the East End, I mean, it's all part of the cachet, but it comes to a point where it becomes a burden, but it's all part of it. Yeah, no, I think the space, but it, obviously, but the people, I mean, this is where I might not have realised at the time how important the X6 Collective, obviously I knew, but I was within that, but how important it was they were in setting up in motion that whole movement. And drawing, you know, the big names in. Yeah. Art exists in a continuum. So there are big moments and then there are quiet moments. And within the quiet period, people who are the practitioners, practitioners, the artists still have to find their amazing, mm -hmm. their amazing vision. So there's obviously still things happening all the time. But for dance... The beginning of the 80s were really important. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all of that with me.